The Florida Gators lost their wide receivers coach, Kerry Colbert, to the NFL. I'm talking with Gator Breakdown's own Dave Waters about losing Colbert and some names that may be on the short list to replace him. So obviously this loss is a lot bigger than some of the other losses. It stings a little bit more. Um, he, Kerry Colbert pulled some real talent in the wide receiver position in 2023. He also has a really consistent resume before coming to Florida. How much is UF going to miss him? Yeah, I think that, that Ali, I think that was probably remained to be seen. But I think, like you said, I think we like the outlook of what mm -hmm. was coming to Gainesville for, for Colbert. And as you said, pair pair the outlook with his resume. And I think I, I still think there were reasons to be excited about Kerry Colbert being on the skater staff. And, and look, it, it kind of it kind of relays that with having NFL interest. That the Broncos were not the only team interested from from what I was told uh, in Kerry Colbert going to the NFL. So, uh, yeah, I, I do think, you know, we didn't see a whole lot from the wide receiver position last year. I think Justin Shorter had his best year uh, as a Florida Gator receiver, and he was hurt, uh, but he became more of a downfield threat uh, under Kerry Colbert and his coaching. But, um, you know, quarterback play, I think, came into a little bit. Inconsistent quarterback play hurt these Florida wide receivers in their production uh, a, a bit. We, we did see plenty of times that wide receivers open but inconsistency at the quarterback spot held, held, held the numbers back uh, when it was all said and done but yeah I, I do think that those three guys that he pulled in Aiden Mazel, Andy Jean and, and Eugene Wilson was a big haul for the 23 class I think we're all excited to see all three of those guys uh, coming up in the 2023 season for the Gators so yeah it was more of a this hurt from an outlook not necessarily what he had done so far at Florida. Right. So Ike Hilliard is a name that a lot of people have been tossing around. I remember watching him when I was little. <laughs> Do you think that that's really a possibility? Do you think that's just fans being overly nostalgic? I think maybe a possibility. I'm not so sure how far at the top of the list uh, he is. Mm -hmm. I don't think he'd be the top choice. Maybe Billy Napier probably had to miss on a guy or two before he got mm -hmm. to Ike Hilliard. But, you know, an NFL resume that lasts for years. I think it was off the top of my head, 2012, I think, maybe been his first year uh, coaching there. So a long resume in the NFL uh, there coaching wide receivers. Went to Auburn last year, part of that staff. Uh, and then, uh, of course, you know, only one year there for Brian Harson. Only So only one year as a, as a, as a NFL, uh, as a college football uh, wide receiver coach. So I think the worry there would, I hear you'll be, how could he recruit? Uh, and, right. you know, of course, he's a name in Gator Nation. But sure. is he a name that resonates with, 2024 wide receivers that, that you're going to be recruiting down the road. Uh, so I think coaching wise and his NFL pedigree, he had been there for a while. Uh, you, you, you get that. But I do think in the back of my mind, I would wonder how he could recruit not being around the college game for so long. So what are some guys that interest you for the opening? Yeah, the, the hot name that was coming out um, uh, a good bit here was Justin Stepp. He was the, he's the wide receiver coach at South Carolina. His name got really hot and heavy late week, uh, right mm -hmm. after the the kind of announcement was made. From everything I can gather, probably looked like he's going to stay at South Carolina. He's the South Carolina mm -hmm. wide receiver coach right now. From everything, it sounds like he's probably going to stay at, at South Carolina and, and, and not move there. Uh, from South Carolina inside the SEC East uh, with Billy Napier and takeover for, for Kerry Colbert. He had a, uh, a stint at Arkansas where he recruited well and, and developed players there well. So he's got an SEC background. Uh, right. It has a connection to Billy Napier previously. So, But it doesn't look like uh, that was really going to, uh, to, to, to happen all that uh, all that much right now. So just as that was the hot name, uh, Ike Hilliard's name has been there, uh, Decker, uh, who's on the staff right now. He's an analyst. He was an analyst under uh, Kerry Colbert for this Gator wide receiver group. And so another name I think we probably should be uh, on the lookout for, Dallas Baker. Uh, I was going to ask you about Dallas Baker. I, uh, you know, I'm biased, but right. I think Dallas Baker might be a good hire. Yeah. He's been in the college game, so he, he's used to the the recruiting role that you know worries me about Ike Hillier a little bit. Recently, just took a job at Baylor, so you know you have another That's Power Five right. program yeah. that has interest uh, in, in in a former Gator. Uh, so yeah, I mean he checks some boxes of being a former Gator. Now in a Power Five of a wide receiver coach, mm -hmm. you know doesn't necessarily probably have the inroads of recruiting in the state of Florida, but at least has he has recruited at the college right. level. You know nothing's going to surprise him. Nothing's he knows what he's getting into. Uh, he's right. been in, he's been in the state of Florida uh, playing there. So yeah, he has and experience you know, with these fans. There you go. So you, the expectation. So, you know, Baker, you know, make, makes a lot of sense in, in, in some ways. So, you know, you got two former Gators maybe in the mix with Ike Hilliard and, and, and Dallas Baker. So, you know, I think you, you, you'd get some warm, fuzzy feelings if it was one of those guys. But yeah. Yeah, I think as we 
as we as we keep going here, Dallas Baker does. Uh, you know, it piques my interest maybe uh, a bit more than it did originally, uh, mm-hmm. and I I would not mind seeing him in Gainesville at all. Well, you know, and it seems like Napier tends to go for the younger guys too yeah. a lot of the time, and and I guess I mean shoot, maybe I'm dating myself here, but I don't even know that Dallas Baker qualifies as one of the younger guys anymore. You know, um, <laughs> I, we feel young, but we're we're not. And when you're talking about hiring 29 year olds and stuff, yeah. 38 doesn't seem so weird. No, no. I'm, I mean, I think I'm around that age too. You know, I'm turning 40 this year. So it's just like, Hey, yeah, I was in college around Dallas Baker at the time he's in college as well. So, you know, it was, uh, it, you're right. Yeah. I still feel young. So man, I think he can, he can feel young at the same time. And as you said though, you know, it does seem like Billy Napier, um, you know, Patrick Tony was a young up and comer assistant, made him defensive coordinator. We see the same thing with Austin Armstrong right now on that side of the ball. William Pegler, a coach that we're just talking about on the tight end side of of replacing him as well. You know, there are some young names Billy Napier has brought in uh, through, through, through the, uh, through his time at Louisiana and his early tenure at Florida so far. Um, so last year there really was a big wide receiver haul that Colbert brought, brought in. So do you think that that kind of, this happened maybe at a good time because we're going to take less wide receivers in the 2024 cycle anyway. So it's maybe not quite as painful as it could have been. I can, yeah, I can see that. I think maybe where it hurts was, you know, or, or there's some big names out, out there for this 24 class and they're all just kind of concentrated in that South Florida area. Uh, you know, so you had this reputation, um, you know, you had a coach who maybe had a relationship uh, with some of the bigger names that you're going, going to be going after uh, here in this 2024 cycle. And you're going to be fighting, of course, you know, if you look at South Florida receivers, you've had to fight off Georgia and Alabama recently. Of course, Miami's improving their recruiting on a crystal ball and, you know, the, the their approach to, to to recruiting right now, so it is a um, maybe not an ideal time to maybe start relationships over again because right. there's just you know those those uh, those top those top of the recruiting ranking receivers you're going to be going after are just really clustered in South Florida. Uh, but you know yeah, I still I still say Florida you know probably could bring in three they, they they would have brought in four if they could have nailed one more big time prospect for the class of 23 so i could see him bringing in you know two at least and i could see him bringing in three again uh for the 24 cycle so now it's just getting somebody in right now first of all the first priority is spring practice but at the same time going ahead and start those relationships uh, with his big names in 2024 well, let's hope that they make a hire soon, like this week, so that the ball can start <laughs> rolling on that. Hey, guys, thanks for watching the breakdown of the wide receiver position opening. If you enjoyed it, we have a video coming tomorrow where we take a deep dive into why Austin Armstrong should find more success in year one than Patrick Tony did in his first year as UF's defensive coordinator. Subscribe here so you don't miss it. If you want to know more about who the Gators are likely to hire at the tight end position, Click here.